So let me show you by experience how well the money bag works. I called on the fourth largest company in the world in its field, headquartered in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I met for an hour with the CEO of the company and three vice presidents in a conference room, and then we did a business card exchange. After that, I went out into the parking lot, I entered, it, I entered all their data into my database, I sent them each an email. Notice what I just said. I didn't send an email to a distribution of four people. One of the people in the meeting was the CFO of the company. My notes said, boring and highly analytical. So I sent him a boring and highly analytical email. Another guy that was in the meeting was the head of sales. He was an outgoing, gregarious guy. I sent him, I, the first two paragraphs were complete nonsense and, and just frivolity, right? It's a pain in the butt to do four emails, but way more effective. The next thing that I did is I took out my money bag and sent them for each, a hand, each of the four a handwritten note. Three months later, I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in front of 175 sales reps at our company. The CEO of the company gets in front of the group. I'm in the back waiting to be introduced. And he says, we're going to have a blast of a day. It's going to go fast. We're going to learn a lot. And it's going to be fun. And this Jack Daly, he has a great background. I'll let him tell you about it. I'm going to tell you about my first time meeting him, which is just three months ago. We had four of us. We met in a conference room, and then he left, and I went back to my desk, and I'm sitting in my desk, and all of a sudden, the email came in, and I went, it's an email from Jack Daly. The son of a bitch still must be in the building. <laughs> this is what he said. I'm in the back on, yeah, baby. Then he said, I got up from my chair, went over to the head of sales, I got, hey, Bill, did you get an email from Jack Daly? I don't know, my computer isn't on. Turn it on, I'm going to see. Look, the guy's got to be in the building. Wait a minute, yours is different than mine. And then we all got handwritten notes the next day, and I said, that's it, call that guy up, see when he's available in the next three months. If the only thing we're, we learned that day is how he pulled that stunt off, it'll be worth our time and his fee. Here's the best part of this story. That company has hired me eight more times, plus hired me twice for other clients as a gift, plus four quarterly webinars. And it all came from that little money bag. Buy and use a money bag. I was in Toronto. I did public events Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday for CEOs. And then I did um, an, a, a full day sales workshop in two parts of the town on Thursday and Friday. This email is what I received from one of the CEOs that attended Monday and this is what I got on Friday from her. The subject, two sales since Monday. Hey Jack, I was seriously considering crashing your course today to share this but thought better to send you this note. Since Monday of this week, after attending your session with XYZ in fabulous North Dumfries, Ontario, I've closed two sales using your techniques. Emailing from the parking lot and the thank you card dropped in the mailbox nearest the building. Both clients loved it and both bought my software product. Watch this sentence. That has simply never happened before. The sales cycle with our software is typically two to four months. Two sales since Monday. Buy and use a money bag. So I have owners of businesses that see me at events like this and they hire me to come in and talk to their salespeople. One of those owners was Willie Walker. And he's the CEO and chairman of a company called Walker and Dunlop. And Willie asked me to address his 180 salespeople, and he was bringing them all into Idaho. And so uh, he says, and make sure you talk about the money bag. So I did what I just did in front of you, and then I'm ready to move on to something else. And Willie pops up out of his chair where Adam's sitting and says, wait, wait, wait. And he's got a box underneath. That's his company. And he had customized money bags for everybody. And then he gave me one, and I opened it up, and check this out. The Walker and Dunlop Jack Daly Systems and Processes of How to Use It. And then as the CEO of the company got up in front of his guys, and you know what he said? This is the way we now do business at Walker and Dunlop. If you as a salesperson don't do it this way, you will not be working here at Walker and Dunlop. Systems and processes, systems and processes, systems and processes. In the last four years, Walker and Dunlop has grown their business by 500%. 
several of you mentioned that you've read my most recent book, Hyper Sales Growth, and I saw a couple of them laying on the tables, and I will tell you that there is a testimonial in there from Willie Walker on what impact I made inside the company and the fact that it's through systems and processes. Be sure before you leave today, whether it's the morning or the afternoon, how many of you are going to be here for the afternoon session on sales management and culture? Okay. Uh, be sure you give me a business card. I'll put you into my database. You'll get a newsletter every month for free from me on ideas on how to better grow your business. Okay. Just drop that business card up here and we'll take care of you. All right. So that's item number one, which is item number two on page three, systems and process. We're done with that. Now, let's go up to item number one, which is leverage. It's a big word. I'm still on page number three. This is a huge, huge item for me. I have been using the word leverage in my businesses for most of my life. Here's the definition. How can I generate more business with less work? How can I make more money with less work? You're looking at a guy who has never gotten up in the morning and said, man, I want to work harder than everybody else out there. What I've said is, I, I want to experience more in life and I'd like to work less and really experience a lot of life. So let me show you how, how it works. When I was 12 years old, I took a newspaper route off of a kid that had it before me and it was 32 customers and they dropped the papers off at this X and those were the 32 houses we, that we delivered the papers to. The first thing that I did, and the kid was with me that had it before, he was with me for two days. Then he's out of the picture. My first day, all I did was make notes. And the notes I made were really important notes. They were, what can I do to make sure that I don't lose half or more of these customers after this kid leaves. One of the hardest things that we do in sales is get someone to trust us. Once you've gotten somebody to trust you, make sure that you keep them. One of the things that we're learning about sales at the top sales performance level is the top salespeople tend to call on less people when they write more business. And they get more from their existing. They go wide and they go deep because they've already earned the person's trust. So the crime of the century would be me take this over and then two weeks from now I'll have 10 customers. So the first thing that I did day number one is take notes. What can I do to make it invisible? Well, deliver the paper the same way they've been delivering it all along. This guy liked it under the front mat. This guy liked it in the side door. This guy liked it on the back porch. This guy liked it in the mailbox. Those are my notes first day. Day number two is the last day I have with the kid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask him a lot of questions. And this street kept going up here. And there were a lot of houses. But we took this turn and I said, who delivers the paper to those people? And he said, I don't even know if they get the paper. Bang! Loud noise to me. Then we got over here and he shakes my hand and says, good luck, and walked into the house. He lived there. Bang! It's another loud noise. Here's what it just told me. This kid has 32 customers, not because the market's 32, he's got 32 because he quit selling. He took his foot off of the pedal. Well, I'm not a foot off the pedal guy, I'm a pedal to the metal and right through the floorboard guy. So that night I went home and I called the newspaper company up and I said, what's the chances you could drop an extra 10 papers on that X tomorrow for me? The guy at the newspaper company says, why do you want the extra 10 papers? And I said, well, I want to call on people and see if I can get them to sign up as regular subscribers. The guy on the phone says, why would you want to do that? Why would I not want to do that? I'll make more money, won't I? He said, yeah, but we've never had a call like that before. I said, well, it sounds like a company issue. All I want is 10 papers. He said, we'll have the 42 there tomorrow. I knocked on these doors the next day and I said, I want to give you this paper for free for a week. And then a week from now, I'm going to come back and I'm going to ask you to sign up for 13 weeks. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to love this paper. And you know what else? If I sell, sign up enough of you to sign up for 13 weeks, they're going to award me with a prize to go to Coney Island Amusement Park. But I'll talk to you about that on Friday. <laughs> One year later, 
I had 275 customers. This is in the Philadelphia suburbs. My parents were serious about my schoolwork. My mom had to look at my homework and approve it before I could deliver my papers after school. And by that time it was dark, it was cold, it was ice, it was snow, it was awful. And every night I came home and I cried. Every night I'm in my bedroom crying. And I reenacted a scene right out of Animal House. Remember the movie Animal House with the angel and the devil? Well, that's me. Here's the devil. Quit this job. It sucks. It's cold, dark, icy, and you got to quit. And the angel's going, we like the money, Jack Daly. You keep going, right? <laughs> and this noise is going on in my head until I came up with a solution. You had to be 12 years old to have a newspaper route. So I hired five 11-year-olds. And I said, I already did the heavy lifting and grew the business. And so what I'm going to do is divide them up amongst you. And a year from now, if you do a good job for me, I'll write you a letter of recommendation. And I'm going to split the money 50-50 that the company pays me. And I'm going to sweeten the pot. I'm going to guarantee you your 50%. And there's no guarantee for me. If, these two, if the last 40 people don't pay, I've got to pay for the 275. I've got to pay for you. And there's no left money for me. Now, because of that, it's important that I do the collecting. And that was the beauty of the plan. Because I never told them that I would share the tips, which is where all the money in newspaper delivery was anyway. <laughs> so now let me show you this. These five people did 100% of the work, and Jack kept 70% of the money. That's what I mean by leverage. How can I make more money with less work? How can I generate more business with less work? That year I was awarded Newspaper Boy of the Year honors and I waited two months and then I called the company up and I said my name is Jack Daly I took a route of 32 customers and turned it into 275 in a single year and I was awarded Newspaper Boy of the Year honors. Do you know who I am? The guy on the phone said Jack Everybody at this company knows who Jack Daly is. I said, well, that's really shocking because I've been waiting two months for somebody from the company to say, how did you do that? Don't you think somebody should ask me, how did you do that? And the guy on the phone says, yeah, how did you do that? <laughs> and I said, well, rather than, rather than tell you, I have a proposal for you. Here's my proposal. On any given Saturday, Give me five kids and put them into a Volkswagen van and we'll go out to a new territory. Now I'm going to need a district manager because I'm not old enough to drive. <laughs> He'll drive us out to this new territory. I want these five kids to ghost me on the calls. I want them to see how I say, what I say, and why I say what I say. And for those four hours on any given Saturday, as many Saturdays as you want, my flat fee will be $100. That was in 1962. In 1962, my father did not make $25 an hour. In 1962, three out of every four Saturdays a month, I made $25 an hour for four hours plus 70% of the money on 275 papers that I never had to deliver. That's what I mean by leverage. And if a 13-year-old kid can figure this game out, then this room of people here can figure it out. I want to be provocative with you today. I want to push you out of your comfort zone. And I want you to look at the world and your business a lot differently than you probably ever have. I want you to find leverage. Okay? Now, I used to just say, all right, let's go on to the next page. Don't do that. I used to say, let's go on to the next page. But somebody that sat in a room like you're sitting right now this past year took me to lunch and said, you think everybody got what you're talking about there? And I said, yeah. And he said, no. And I said, really? And he goes, absolutely. He said, in fact, the next time you deliver that program, I want you to look for something in your audience. And I was looking at you, and he was right. He was right. You didn't get what I was talking about. Because if you got what I was talking about, and I don't want to pick on anyone necessarily, but this top section would have been filled with notes, right? He said what's happening is the people that are sitting in the seats, 
they ain't taking notes on that top section because they didn't get what you were talking about. And so, let me show you what I was trying to say. I was trying to teach you a lot of things there. And you need to understand this in order for the next couple hours to be beneficial because it's going to happen on a lot of pages. Here, here's one of the things I was trying to teach you. If you don't have an assistant, you are one. There are things that need to be done in sales, but not necessarily done by the salesperson. If the only thing you walk out of here with this morning is one concept, please walk out with this one. H-P-A. High payoff activities. That's what a salesperson needs to be focused on. High payoff activities. Too many salespeople doing things that don't coin. They don't materialize into income. They don't materialize into sales. You want to work on high payoff activities. You can set this smartphone up with, with little alerts all day long, right? So how about an alert that goes off at 10.30 and one that goes off at 1.30 and one that goes off at 3.30 that just says high payoff activities with a question mark. And you look down at what you're working on going, why am I doing this? And we just get distracted away from the things that we absolutely will coin. About four weeks ago I was in Las Vegas and I was hired by a company that was based in Ottawa, Canada and they were bringing the 120 salespeople of theirs into Vegas one day early to a conference, their industry conference. And they spent the one day with me for eight hours. And I did that page that I just did with you on the newspaper boy and I want to take you to Vegas now and I want to show you what I did with those 120 salespeople. So take your notes. Here's what I said. All right. So I said, why don't we assume that you make $50 an hour at what you do? And I heard the room chuckling and talking with one another, and here's why. Because all of the 120 salespeople in that company were 100% commission only. So what they were talking about with each other was, this guy Jack Daly didn't do his homework. We don't get paid by the hour. Time out. That's what I did with him. I called him out on it. I said, wait, wait, wait. You think I don't know that you make 100% commission only? I know that. But everybody has an hourly rate. Everybody does. Let me show you how to calculate it if you were 100% commission only. Keep track of all the hours you work in a month. Take the money you made that month, divide it by the hours you work, that's your hourly rate. The fact that the accounting department or HR isn't calculating it is at your jeopardy. Every single person in this room should know what your hourly rate is. Time is money. How you spend your time is how you spend your money. And you will spend it a lot wiser if you understood how much it was worth. I'm calling on Adam, and Adam has agreed, before I even got to his place of business, Adam's agreed to give me an hour of his time. Within five minutes of the call, this is what I discover. No business in the house, never will be business in the house, and even if there was business in the house, Adam and I are not getting along well. I then turn to him at five minutes into the call and say, Adam, you're going to think I'm David Copperfield because I just found you an additional 55 minutes today because I'm out of here, brother. And I'm out. I have clients that we put an app on their smartphone. Here's a couple of them. Near me and around me. Right? Now, all you do is you put the profile of what an ideal customer looks like to you into the app and then you leave Adam's call with 55 minutes on your hand and you say, bang, near me or around me and all those red dots come up and you press one and then Siri says, take a left, take a right and you're there. And that would be a lot better use of my time than sitting here for the next 55 minutes on a guy that doesn't have any business and wouldn't do it with me anyway. And so I'm about $5 down as opposed to $50 down. That's huge. That is huge. Now, let's say that for your assistant you hired a kid to do work for you between the age of 9 and 16. And let's just say that you paid that kid 
$10 an hour, and I'll go and tell you what I'm going to pay them to do. Play video games. Because I don't know you, but I bet that I could take a 10-year-old, 12-year-old up here on stage and set you up and play video game, and they'll take you down. Because Malcolm is six, and he just did that to me last week. Now, the video games I like to pay kids to play are really cool games as far as I'm concerned. Let me show you my favorite one. Update my contact management system and database. <laughs> oh, I hate doing it. I hate doing it. Look, can, can I? Can I? Can I touch this? Sure. Whew. Oh, see this? I'm, 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 I'm really proud that I know how to use this. This, this is, this is another generation. This is not me. You put me in front of a keyboard, oh my God, I'm frozen. You know, you t now I want to tell you before, our, before I'm finished with you this morning, I'm going to talk to you about the importance of a touch system and the importance of updating your contact management system and database and the importance of leveraging it. I'm a major, major leverage guy on contact management system and database. It's just that when I'm at a keyboard, you know what I goes through my mind? You're delivering papers again, Jack. Don't deliver papers. Let, let, let me show it to you. Let's say that my contact management system is Salesforce.com. Salesforce, all right? The power in Salesforce is huge. They're like super freeways. Now, here I am with data entry, nervous as can be. Not liking it at all. And then all of a sudden, a pop-up comes up and says, hey, if you go over to this section, there's all kinds of power over here. And I'll go, no, 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 no. Oh, I've been here two hours. I don't want to lose my data. Right? And I'm not going to go over there. Now, you give a 12-year-old that job, and they're going to be going, shh, 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 shh. And they're going to come in and go, did you know you could do this? Did you know you can do that? And I'm like, no, go do that. Go do that. <laughs> right? Because the kid has passion. And this guy doesn't have passion. And I got to go and place my place of passion. Right? Now, let's, let, let's say you build a touch system. I'll show you how to do that today. But I don't want you to execute the touch system. I want you to get somebody else to execute it. And maybe you got mailings that you need to have done. Well, that isn't a high payoff activity either. And so come up with a list of things that you could dump onto someone else. Now, let's say that you were able to dump 10 hours a week of work and at $10 an hour, this kid is making $100 a week tax-free. Make sure you tell them that it's worth 40%, right? <laughs> How happy is this kid making $10 a week? Huh? Real happy. Guess what? I don't care. Only thing I care about is me. And you know what me is? Watch this. At 10 hours a week, at a net $40 an hour, makes me $400 a week times 50 weeks, that would be an extra $20,000 after paying this kid to update my database and do the touch system. So I went through this with my group in Vegas and I said, this morning if I greeted you at the door and said, within the first 30 minutes I'm gonna show you how to put an extra $20,000 in your jeans, are you looking forward to being with me today? I think they'd be high-fiving me. But, see, I did that here. But the notes weren't in there like they are now. Alright, so we have to th keep thinking about what I'm talking about here because this is a huge piece of leverage. I, uh, I, have, no, I have no employees in my company. I have no employees by design. I have no office space. I work out in my home when I'm home. And uh, I have seven personal assistants that are independent contractors, though. And they all work out of their homes, and they all do different things. Some of them have been with me for 10 years, and I've only met them one time personally in my life. And all seven hear the same thing. I only do, I, I only do three things in this company. I speak. Because I like to and I think I'm good at it. I travel to where I speak because I really enjoy traveling 
And even if I didn't, I haven't figured out how to get you all to come to my house. So if I want to do the first, I got to do the second. And the third is I have fun. And anything that goes on in this company that doesn't have anything to do with that, one of you seven does. Now, does the system and process work perfect? No. Every once in a while, I get an email from one of those seven. And I read it, and then I send it back to all seven, and I say, somehow this mistakenly came to me today. I only do three things. Speak, travel, fun. This does not apply. Figure it out. Because I work really hard at staying focused on HPA, high payoff activities. And you need to do the same. All right? Now, here's another thing that I was trying to teach you with the newspaper story and things. Here we go. Leverage. Model the masters. Model the masters. What is your name? Abrita. 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 Mm -hmm. So Abrita owns a company. That's what I'm going to just say. Make that assumption. And she has 20 salespeople. Okay. You're interviewing me to come with, come work with you. And I say we're so close for me agreeing. There's only one non-negotiable standing in the way. Let me tell you what that is, and then we'll get to work. I don't want you to get put me in my territory for 30 days. I don't want you to put me in front of a prospect or a customer for 30 days. I don't want you to expect a single piece of business from me out of the first 30 days. Now, in the first week, what I want to do is I want to attach myself to the hip of the number one salesperson in your company. And I'm going to spend the whole week there. I'm going to find out what they do and why. What they don't do and why they don't do it. I'm going to find out the five things that they think are the keys to their success in being the number one salesperson. I'm going to find the five potholes that they went in their career so that I can drive around them and not go in them as well. I'm going to find out what their, their key activities are like. I'm going to find out what their time management is like. I'm going to find out what their pipeline management is like. I'm going to find out what their touch system is like. Literally, I'm going to strip them clean. Now, in week number two, I'm going to go out with the number two person. And in week number three, I'm going to go out with the number three person. And week number four, Four, I'm going to take everything that I learned from them plus everything that I know and then I'm going to build my playbook and next year if you'll allow me to do that in my first month I'll be in the top five of your 20 salespeople the answers to so much in selling are already out there somebody's already figured it out 10% of the year, I'm hired by very big companies to speak at exotic places around the world to what's called their President's Club, the Chairman's Club, the very top performers. And they take them all away with their significant other and spouse to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, and to the Caribbean, and the cruises, and all of these great destinations. The problem with it is this. The same people go every year. And I say to the owners of business, there's a problem here, guys. You have the same economy, the same product, the same price, the same service, but different results. These people, are, they obviously are doing things different. Find out what they are and build the systems and processes to do that. So, I thought that I taught that when I said that on Saturdays, I took these five kids out on caravan for $100 for four hours so they could model the master. See what I say when I say how I say it? That's what I said. Um, I also said that when I was 13 years old, I interviewed 200 adults so that I could map out where I wanted to go in my life from successful people so I didn't have to learn it on my own. You see, I thought that I did this leverage, but what the person at lunch told me is when I did this, that you didn't make the notes that you're making now. So I'm still learning how to do this. Stay with me, guys. There's a lot of really good stuff in this workbook. But the pages very often are blank. So you've got to fill it in.